Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christy Lukasiak. I will never get over the awkwardness of introducing a YouTube video. I just won't. So welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications so that you know when I am posting. Okay, so now that we got the business out of the way, I thought that it would be kind of fun for me to do a slightly different sort of video today. I do a ton of Dance Moms reaction videos where I go back and I watch things from the show. I do other things on YouTube as well, but it always seems like you guys want to see like dance bumps, dance bumps, dance bumps, which look, I'm here for the people. I will give you what you want, but then I'm also going to film some stuff that I like too. Okay, here's the backstory. Kelly and I, Kelly and I, Kelly and I, you idiot. We have a dance bombs recap podcast called Back to the Bar. And each week we go back and we recap old episodes of Dance Moms, but we also talk about things that we remember from our perspective, like what was kind of going on behind the scenes, you know, just giving you a little bit more tea. Now, sometimes the tea is really hot. Sometimes it's lukewarm. Sometimes you guys know more tea than we do because there has been so much Dance Mom stuff that has been leaked online over the years that I get an education at times, you know? This is one of those times where there was information out there that I had no idea existed and I thought it might be kind of fun to react to that. So I had heard that there was a list out there from an old production meeting of dance themes on Dance Moms. This is for season five. And I have to tell you, this is the season I did not come back. Like I left season 4B. These are dance themes for season 5A. This is all online. So I'm not like reviewing anything super, super scandalous or, you know, confidential. This was actually online. I think someone had actually bought maybe some production notes and then they posted it online. So quick Google search, I found it and I have never seen this before <laughs> until I printed it out this morning. So I thought it might be kind of fun if I went back through and reacted to dance themes that never were, if you will. I do believe at least one of these actually ended up being a dance. Now remember, this is season five. So I did not come back and I did not watch the show at all. I barely watched the show when I was on it. I would go back and I would watch the episode if I was tweeting live for the network but I didn't like randomly watch Dance Moms and I certainly haven't watched it since. The only time I see Dance Mom stuff honestly is on social media when I, like my feeds blow up, TikTok especially, with Dance Moms content. So you guys are much bigger experts on what aired on the show than I am because I remember like what it felt like to live it. I don't necessarily know what aired. Does that make sense? Again, this was online and this was a creative meeting for dance themes that they were exploring for season five. Let's dive into this. I printed it out. I'm not going to read the names at the top, but let me just say, I know these people. <laughs> I know all of them. And so I'm reading them and I'm like, oh, I know who came up with that theme. So let's get into it. The first one is Pitch Perfect. Honestly, our kids were absolutely obsessed with Pitch Perfect during the filming of Dance Moms. That's when it had come out. They would do the cup song on the back of the bus about, mm, I don't know, 565 billion times. So I'm pretty sure that the Pitch Perfect theme probably was inspired by them, but there are some notes there. They had talked about the idea of dancing to a live performance, which would have been kind of cool. Girls possibly dancing to a beatboxer, like they did the Sun So You Think You Can Dance. I actually think that would have been really, really cool. I don't know about dancing to a live performance, especially in a dance competition, because I feel like a lot of the rules, like if there's a live performance on stage, it would be hard for the judges to differentiate if they're judging the music or the dancing. So that might fall into like a weird category, but that's me being like a true dance mom and thinking about like competitions, not a TV show. So I don't know. Then they had talked about having the Asian actress from Pitch Perfect on or Esther Dean from Pitch Perfect. And it just says that this could work for the jazz funk voguing style. I don't quite know what that was. There's gonna be some mention of Vogue later. So somebody was like super into Madonna at that point, I'm thinking. So on a scale from one to offensive, Pitch Perfect is very low. I would say this is not offensive at all. If anything, I think it would be really cool to have the live performance element or aspect of it. So this one is not shocking. I'm in full support of this. I feel like this could have been a really fun moment on Dance Mom. So let me know in the comments if they did something like this. Now I said that one was not offensive. The next one, pretty offensive. <laughs> it just says something with a cross. 
boss. And then it goes on to give extra notes. Here's my kitty. Say hello, you're making your YouTube debut. You can sit here. All right, so something with a cross. And then it goes on to say exorcism, something offensive, possibly license a prayer. <laughs> I would not have been shocked if there had been prop vomit where somebody was vomiting green pea soup on stage like the real exorcist. That would have been totally on par with what we did with Dance Moms. Or if we weren't gonna have the vomit on stage because the girls would have slipped in it as they were doing turns in second, I would say probably someone would have had green vomit on their nightgown to show that they had just vomited. I'm certain someone would have been possessed. Chloe would have most likely been the demon itself. There would have been a priest. Oh God, this just has lots of level of offensive. So I'm gonna go with one to offensive. I'm gonna say this one's pretty offensive. Okay. <laughs> So the next one doesn't have additional notes, but just the title of it absolutely kills me. You ready? Are you prepared? Are you sitting down? Because we are talking about sad clowns. What? <laughs> clowns are creepy in my opinion. Sorry if you're like a clown stan, I am not. And then sad clowns are like a total oxymoron because clowns are supposed to be happy. Then you have the sad clown. So apparently the sad clown kills himself. This is far before Joker. So this was not like Joker-esque. This was just somebody who apparently had some deep-seated childhood issues with sad clowns and decided that the clown should commit suicide. So glad this was not a Chloe solo. Now we get into a really interesting one. The Palestine-Israel conflict. We could barely touch on the subject of immigration on Dance Moms because everyone, <clears throat> one of us, got it very wrong, remember? Because they were immigrating home to Staten Island on the Titanic, which first of all, how do you immigrate home? When you immigrate, you leave home and you go to a new country. And Staten Island was obviously mistaken for Ellis Island and the Titanic never made it. So I don't think that on Dance Moms, we should be tackling really large issues like the Palestine-Israel conflict. I'm gonna go with that one is pretty damn offensive. Okay, this one's fine. Star Wars Guardian of the Galaxy. Chloe would have been so down for it, but I would like you to comment below who you think would have been Princess Leia, because obviously they all would have wanted to be Princess Leia, and who would have been Darth Vader, an Ewok, a Wookiee? Who would have been the Wookiee? Whoever the bad guy was, Chloe would have been. I'm just saying. Or Nia. Like, those were the two. Oh, and Paige would have just sat in the back. I mean, come on, let's be honest. So next Next up, we have Game of Thrones, which obviously is like super popular, especially back then. And it, oh, I didn't read that part. It just says use of crowns, a throne. Here's the kicker, someone getting beheaded. Okay, all I'm envisioning is Mackenzie holding like a mannequin head off stage. And when the beheading happens, her throwing it across the stage and it rolling. And then if you tripped over the head, you were at the bottom of the pyramid. I'm just saying, I think that's how that one would have played out. Then we have the plague. Would there have been like mosquitoes? Would there have been like rats? Cause like rats and mosquitoes were big causes of the plague. Oh God, there's a season nine of dance moms coming up. I bet there's a COVID dance. I'm just thinking this one's great. We have child obesity and it says possible overweight dancer. You couldn't get away with this in 2023. You couldn't really get away with this in 2014. And um, that's very offensive on a lot of levels. Okay, so then we have a crush, which is the notes, good opportunity to bring in story about girls and girl crushes. Then later on, it does go on for lesbian marriage dance. So apparently they were really pushing the girls having crushes on each other narrative. I mean, okay. All right, then we have cancer ward. I think they did something, not maybe a cancer award but the waiting room I think season five nationals which i know a lot of people love that dance so maybe that like became the cancer ward became the waiting room because maybe cancer ward that's a little offensive all right freaky friday this is actually cute because the girls act like their moms except it has highlighted their worst trait physical or mental so i'm assuming abby would have put like a chicken beak on chloe or something to talk about my nose because she always like wanted to go straight for my nose that one would have been fun then you have madonna Madonna voguing. You know, if you guys know the iconic Madonna video, like in the black suit, I would have loved this number. And then we have the final one that says number with a live animal. <laughs> First of all, back to being a real dance mom, I am going to say I'm pretty certain in every competition rules, it does say no live animals on stage. But again, we probably would have been allowed because we were shooting a show, but it does say Wizard of Oz and Toto, which PS it's spelled incorrectly. But I think they went on to do Wizard of Oz 
at some point. I don't know if there was a live dog in it. What if they had walked out with a llama and the llama had pooped in the middle of the stage and then they had to dance around the poop? Somebody undoubtedly would have stepped in the poop and it would have been a whole thing. Very interesting notes. I am grateful that some of these never saw the light of the day, although I am sad that a few of them didn't because I think they could have been great numbers. Let me know if you like this video. Comment below which dance you wish that they had done and comment below and let me know which one you think was the most scandalous. Again, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications and I will see you back here next week. Bye!